Welcome to Life Application with the Scripture. I'm your host, James Dennis. And I have to say, if you have had a chance to SLS, subscribe, like, share, we would really appreciate if you would do that. This is the wrap up of this beautiful week that we done had. We done had some great speakers Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today is Friday. And this is the day that I sit back and I say thank you for those that have listened and those that are about to listen to these podcasts and thank the speakers that brought the message out. Here we're talking about life, L-I-F-E, life, love, inspire, flourish, and educate. On Monday night, we had this Clifton Webb from the Wayne Road Church of Christ. And he had the opportunity to break down the L in life, which stands for love. Love with a pure heart. No hidden motives. I can't even get into that any more than what he did. I'm just going to say you're going to have to listen to that Cliff Ware broadcast to get the meat and the potatoes of how he pulled all of that out and how that pure heart. I mean, I am going to talk about that, though. That pure heart is important when it comes to love. That pure heart is important when it comes to love. And then on Tuesday night, we had Dr. Clyde Mayberry from Allen Park Church of Christ. Um, Dr. Clyde Mayberry, if I didn't say doctor, forgive me. And he talked about inspire and he broke down the different levels of, um, inspiration. And the one that I like that he hit on it again, I want you to listen to that podcast because that's where you get again, the meat and the potatoes out of what, um, Dr. Mayberry brought with him, the spiritual inspiration that we get from the word of God. God and how important that is and, and, and how the world needs to not, as Cliff said, have the pure of heart love for one of themselves and one another. But we also need to get that spiritual inspiration from the word of God. The world needs to do that. Right. And then brother Sylvester Hester, the prominent businessman, he comes along and he talks about flourishing. What is flourishing? Flourishing is being successful, continuing to grow, continuing to success, to just continue to just continue on. As I say, I'm going to continue, continue, continue. And he was saying we are the righteous and we should always continue to be better, more successful every day. Brother Hester just brought it. He was nice and calm and cool and just brought the word. And I think he came out of um, Psalms 92 and he uses verses 12 through 15. He broke down what that flourishing is when you when your righteous flourish. Then we had my man Dwayne Roper, Mr. Education himself. And he brought the E, which E stands for educate. And he wanted to let me let me he wanted me to let you all know that he dropped some gems in his that he hoped you picked up on. So if you listen the first time, you might not have picked up on him. Listen again and listen close and see what he dropped. See how he has check this out. Educated you. Yeah, check that out. We need to not only continue to learn, but teach as well. That's what Dwayne Roper brought to the table. Don't just get the education. Throw the education back. Continue getting it. We always continue to get it. But throw it again with Dwayne, with Sylvester, with Clyde, with Cliff, with all of these great brothers. You got to listen to their podcasts, how they broke this down, because I can't. I'm not going to even rehash it. I'm just giving you an overview And I do mean an overview, a real quick, like throw a blanket over something. You got to take the blanket off to see what's under the blanket. Check these podcasts out. Tonight, I am going, I'm just going to wrap this up. And I'm going to use Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to use verse 8 and verse 10. And it reads, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves is the gift 
of God. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Let's look at this verse eight. For it is by grace, grace, the grace of God. God don't have to give us grace and mercy. He don't have to allow. He don't have to show favor. But he does. God shows favor. God reigns on the just and the unjust. And the reason why we can obtain salvation. Now I'm talking spiritual here now. The reason why we can obtain salvation. Is through our faith. It's through our conviction that he who is who he is. That Christ has died on the cross, shed his blood, and was rest, rose on the third day to give us salvation. To give us access to salvation. This is the gift. This is what this scripture is saying. This is the gift that God has given us. This is the grace that God has given us to be able to access salvation. Salvation. But this is what the world needs. I know I threw that out at you. Verse 8, I threw that out there for you for a reason. God don't have to give you grace. Let's start right there. So why do God give us grace? Why do God give us grace? Maybe because what did verse 10 say? We are his workmanship. You know, one of the things when I was in school, I did a report on um, German metal workers. I want you to think about that. German metal workers. Now, that sounds good, doesn't it? German metal metal workers. When you think of metal workers, you think of somebody that 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 works with metal, that forms metal, make art out of metal. That's a professional at forming metal, a metal worker. Did you know that a metal worker and a plant worker is the same thing? Now, when you think of a plant worker, you think of somebody in they somebody in a plant just doing mindless jobs. Well, some people do, not all. Oh, you ain't nothing but a plant worker. I've heard people say that. That's the meaning. That's job calling them a plant worker. Because at the end of the day, a German metal worker was nothing that someone that worked in the automotive industry building cars. The cars just happened to be BMWs and Mercedes and Volkswagens. Here in America, there's Ford, Chrysler, and GM. See, you people react on what they are called. A metal worker. Oh, you're, you form metal. You put metal together. You create machinery. A plant worker, you working in a plant. A plant I don't want to work in. That's how people degrade themselves. Now, let's go back to this. We are God's workmanship. People don't understand that everyone on this earth is God's workmanship. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care how short you are. I don't care how wide you are. I don't care how skinny you are. I don't care if you got one leg, if you got two legs, if you got five legs, if you got six arms. You are God's workmanship. So just as we look at somebody that work at GM or Ford or Chrysler and say plant worker, eh, wrong answer, metal worker. They build machineries. They make the metal become the automobile. They form, they create the vehicle that you drive in. That's pretty cool. Everybody can't do that. That's not a mindless act to put that entire car together. Everybody have a job to do. Everybody is important. If somebody don't put that motor together to right, that car will not run. God's workmanship. This is why when, when what, what is God's workmanship? 
It is life, the life he gives in us. When he has created us, we are his workmanship. The human body is a, (laughs) I don't want to say machinery, but if I was to call it machinery, it is an incredible piece of machinery. The way the whole human body works is is fascinating. That is workmanship. That is creation. God's workmanship comes in all sizes and shape. Here's what I want to tell you. Life. We being God's workmanship. The love, the inspire, the flourish, the educate. It says in the scripture, created in Christ Jesus to do good work. When we love, we are doing good work. When we inspire, we are doing good work. When we flourish and we're successful, that's good work. When we educate, that's Good work. And when we look at these, it's not about loving one another, or let me say this, it's not just about loving one another, inspiring one another, flourishing with one another, and educating one another. It's not just that. I want to hit on something a little bit more simpler than that, because this is what what all of this stuff that we're doing, this is where it comes to a head at. One of the problems in our world, and one of the problems, and this is what we're going to be working on in, in the future, in different broadcasters, podcasts, YouTubes, Instagram, we're going to try to help people do this. First, to love themselves. If you don't love yourself, how can you love someone else? You have to understand, back to the verse, that we are God's workmanship you are God's workmanship you are special you are worthy to be loved you know they were just talking about on the news the other day about how social media which we are using is making people feel bad about themselves they look at the social media and then they get off of it and they go oh my goodness I'm ugly I'm no you're unique very rarely is there someone that looks exactly like you outside of a twin You're a unique person. You have unique eyes. You have unique nose, mouth, hands, personality, the way you think. Everyone don't think the same. We can think similar, but we don't think exactly the same. That's why we have lively discussions because we're unique where we can have those discussions and and, and bring out our point of view. And it doesn't mean that somebody is stupid or somebody is, is smarter or whatever. It's you are who you are. But at the end of the day, you got to learn how to love yourself. People fail in relationships and fail in different things. Why? Because they don't love themselves. Folks, that's a big problem. And we cannot promote people not loving themselves. Here on this network, We're going to promote people loving themselves first and foremost. You have to love yourself because you are God's workmanship. When you love yourself, you have to look in in the mirror. I heard somebody say they look in the mirror and say, hey, you are really looking good. You know what? In loving yourself, you have to inspire yourself. Sometimes it takes you to inspire yourself and say, you know what? Today I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it today. I'm going to bring the inspiration. Maybe I need to sit here and daydream. Let me just dream of the things that I want. Let me dream and and get inspired and let inspiration hit me. Let me look at the word of God. Let's see what the word of God says about me. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's workmanship. I am God's workmanship. I love myself. That statement there inspires me that if I'm God's workmanship, I should be in the image of God. I should be like God. I should go out and I should do great things. I should continuously grow. Oh, next point, flourish. I should always keep growing, always successful. Always. 
I make little goals for myself. I don't make them too far because, you know, I don't want to say I'm going to get a million dollars tomorrow and I'm not. But tomorrow I'm going to save up $10. The next day I'm going to save up $20. The next day I'm going to save up $30. Eventually you got $100. But you got to set goals. You got to get inspired. And as you're saving, you're looking and you're going, man, this is just good. I'm flourishing. I'm growing. I'm being successful. And then somebody else look at you and say, hey, how did you do that? Well, we're talking about you now, right? I tell you, talking about you got to love yourself. You got to inspire yourself. You, When you inspire yourself, you flourish yourself. You educate yourself by reading and learning and watching and taking from others. We can learn from everybody. Sometimes it's a matter of just sitting there being quiet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and I'm going to get educated. Somebody say educate it. <laughs> I'm going to educate. I'm going to read. I'm going to learn. We got this thing called YouTube. I want to learn how to change brakes on a car. You can look at it, go to YouTube. What did Dwayne say? YouTube University. You go there and you educate yourself. See, when you are God's workmanship, life, the whole thing of life comes in. You have life in you. You have that love, inspire, flourish, and educate. It's in you. It's just a matter of you realizing it and realizing who you are, that we are, what is Ephesians 2? Or we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to what? To do good work. It's no such thing as a bad us. We are, we create that bad us. We go, that's, the, 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 that's where I'm ahead to. I'm ahead to be a bad me. I'm going to be a horrible person. I'm going to give horrible advice. I'm going to do horrible things. We make that determination. That's not how we're created. It says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Which, watch this, God prepared in advance for us to do. God did not create you to be a loser. God did not create you to be a a failure. We're going to fail. There's going to be times that we are going to fail. We're not designed to fail and just die. I can personally say I've went through a a recent failure, major failure. But that don't mean that I'm not going to get up, brush myself off and be like, hey, you know what? That's a failure I did. I, I get it. What I have to do is take that failure. And educate myself to what, how, why did I fail? What did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong at on that? I have to write that down so I can try not to make that particular mistake again. See, we have to turn our failures around. Why? Because we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That failure is designed to help you to become a better person, to flourish and to be educated. And to be inspired. And to love yourself more because of the failure. Love one another. As we work on loving ourselves, it's also important for us to love one another. If you look at the news, you don't see love for one another in the news. The shootings, the killings, the the mistreatment, the embezzlements, all the stuff that goes on against people. People tend to take violence for love. If a person do this to me, they love me. And that's not love. That's hate. When we, when we see what, when we see that we are God's workmanship, and then not only that we see that we get, we're God's workmanship, but we also look at the word of God and how God describes how we should live, how we should love, how, how we should encourage, inspire one another, how we should flourish and be successful. And how we should be educated. 
The Bible tells, God's word tells us all of that. But it's all about having faith in God's word. If it's an old book to you and it just doesn't matter, God bless you. Because you know what? It's amazing to me that a lot of people that says that the Bible is nothing but an old book of wise tales, they use the principles out of the Bible to be successful. This isn't nothing they came up with. Nothing's new under the sun. Oh, man, that's in the Bible. This stuff that's happening in these soap operas on TV and, 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 and people's stories of relationships and this person doing this and that person doing that and da 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 and all this mystical, magical mess. When you read the Bible, you find a lot of that mystical, magical mess in the Bible. Nothing's new under the sun. But in order to make this world a better place, we have to love one another we must love ourselves and one another with a pure heart this love along with the word of God will inspire us to do better and be better and live better this inspiration will give to us And one another. This inspiration will give to ourselves and one another. Will cause us to flourish. In many different ways. To name a couple of ways. It can help us to flourish spiritually and financially. See, a lot of times we look at financially as successful. Financial successful, it, yes, that's that's good. But spiritual and you as a person flourishing, that's flourishing. That's success when you become a better person. Our flourish will allow us to educate those that are coming behind us, those that don't know, our young people, even some of our older people that don't know that you are opening doors to them. We are flourishing. It will enable us to educate them. But check this out. It will also enable us to get education from others as well. It's a two way street with education. I want you to think about this. This love that inspires us and causes us to flourish will allow us to educate the world on how to become a better place for everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what life is all about. The message is yours. All of our formats that we got coming that you were going to hear in the next couple of months, it's going to be dealing with this love, inspire, flourish, and educate. And I definitely want to thank the speakers that spoke this week in this series. This is the first series that we did on the Life Application with the Scripture podcast. Thank you, um, Brother Clifton Webb, um, Dr. Clyde Mayberry, Brother Sylvester Hester, and Brother Dwayne Roper. I want to thank you four guys for doing a great job on this. And remember, everybody, we want to subscribe, like, share um, to Life App 3, the YouTube channel, to James Life App 3 at Instagram, to Life with the Scriptures Facebook, and also to Life Application with the Scriptures podcast, because it's all about us making life to make this world a better place for us all. I'm your host, James Dennis, and we're going to be bringing it to you. Until next time, don't forget, happiness is not getting what you want, but wanting what you have. Peace. Thank you.